Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to our YouTube channel. So this is the very beginning of our GitLab series. So in the previous video, we learned how to create an account on gitlab.com. So if you have not seen the video yet, I will highly recommend go and watch the video and come back to this one. So in today's video, we will set up the secure shell based authentication for Mac and Linux. In this video, we will go through the steps for Mac and Linux uh, machine. Unfortunately, I do not use Windows, therefore I cannot show you the setup for Windows users. Um, probably I will make another video for the Windows user just to show you how to set it up easily on Windows. I uh, just wanted to let you know that Mac setup and Linux setup for SSH based authentication is exactly the same. I have also included the troubleshooting um, kind of like session. So if you have any problems with the troubleshooting or if you have any, any kinds of problem with the authentication, something like authentication failed while you were switching from HTTPS to SSH. So watch the video till the end where I try to show you how you could fix that problem. So to do that, we just need to open up a terminal. Here I'm using VS Code, for example with the command ssh hyphen keygen without passing any flags or anything so you can just enter and then it will show you where to save the file so in my case slash users slash fajraman slash dot ssh so normally it's the home directory where dot ssh folder uh, hidden folder is created and uh, the key pair actually generates called id underscore rsa for the private key and id underscore rsa dot pub is the public key so you never show your id underscore rsa which is your private key to anyone so if you show it to someone or share it to someone it means that your security is compromised so now we run the cat command to output the content of that file so we need to grab this content and copy it to the clipboard and then paste it to gitlab.com so now we need to open up a browser and we need to log into gitlab.com so now we're gonna click on add ssh key and here we need to paste the public key that we have copied to our clipboard in case you have pasted the private key here by mistakes i would recommend you to generate a new key pair and then copy the public key and paste the content here so anyway so now we're gonna put the title title as you wish name it whatever you want so here we have the option also um, expires at which means that you could set the expiry date for the keys and in our case we are not gonna set that up so we're gonna leave it empty for now so now we are all set everything looks good so we're gonna hit the button called add key so once you do that you can get kind of like a brief summary here you can see the title of the key created uh, on which day expires never and last used we have not used the key yet and you can see the fingerprint as well so here all any keys that you add here in the future you will see the list of the keys that has been added so as you can see on the screen this is a brand new account and we have just added one key therefore we see only one title here which is gitlab underscore key once you generate the key pair by default it will have read write permission for the owner for the private key if you want to you can set it to only read because you don't want to tamper your private key so if you want to do that you can run the command chmod space 400 space then path to your private key so in as i said earlier is going to be your home directory slash dot ssh slash id underscore rsa so that's it so this is a very good practice if you want to follow since i'm on mac therefore i'm gonna fire up a docker container which is running on ubuntu 18.04 so that I could show you how to set up the SSH keys on a Linux machine. So um, now I'm inside the container and I'm gonna run SSH-keygen and then we're gonna put the algorithm for RSA 
and then right after we're gonna say how many bits is going to be so 2048 i think it's by default 2048 and then we're gonna leave a command so which is minus c and then write the command and by default as i said is going to be the home directory i had a key here before therefore it's gonna say uh, do you want to overwrite and yes pass in yes if you want to and uh, then you can see the location of the key pair so um, location of the key pair is going to be home directory slash dot ssh so we can run also the ls command uh, followed by the location of the keys so run the cat command output the content and copy it to the clipboard and now we need to get back to the GitLab UI so you're gonna do the same thing uh, as we did for Mac so you're gonna name it or for the title my Linux key we're gonna leave it empty for expiry date and gonna hit the button so as you can see my Linux key has been added and we never used it because it's just a brand new key pair we just we have just added so now our setup is ready so it's time to test it so in linux and mac you can run the same command that you see on the screen so if you have set that up successfully you should see the message welcome to GitLab. currently we do not have any thing in that particular repository because it's just an empty one therefore you see the message so now let's go ahead and clone the repository so you're gonna clone this time with https so uh, we need to write git clone and then pass in the url so this is gonna prompt for uh, username and then the password so each time you use https in your cases it's gonna ask for the username and the password when you try to clone or when you try to push stuff so as you can see, we do not have anything particularly on the repository. As you can see the warning, you appear to have cloned the um, empty repository. So it's because I had only readme.md file and probably a hidden gitlab.ci.yaml file. So now let's try to clone the same repository using SSH based authentication. To do that, we are gonna remove our repo from the local machine is because if you want to clone it again it will say repo already existed so we're gonna see that after some time but for now just uh, delete the repository so now we are able actually as you can see we have tried the um, cloning and we are able to clone so it seems like ssh based authentication is working for us excellent so we are able to clone using password based authentication and also ssh based authentication and now let's move on to the uh, linux one again i'm gonna fire up a docker container because it's the quickest and easiest for me so i have a running container which is running on ubuntu 18.04 so you're gonna uh, get into that container so um, as you can see i just run this command uh, to get into the container so now we are in all right that's really good since it's a fresh ubuntu machine therefore i would not be able to see the authentication failure issues in my case but many of you might encounter the authentication failed issue once you have git cloned with https then later on you are trying to do that using ssh so in this hands-on ses session i will show you how to do that and as i said earlier that just delete the repository so first of all we are gonna clone so therefore we need to run git clone and the url so you're gonna pass in the username and after that it's gonna ask for the passwords so we need to feed in the passwords as well so let's do that So it seems like um, authentication is okay and we are able to clone the repository to our Linux machine. So as you can see, repository name is git GitLab tutorial. So you're gonna cd to that. And there is nothing actually right now. So there is only readme.md, nothing else there. 
So git branch here we have master but if you create a git repository it will be main because GitLab has changed their default um, branch from uh, master to main. So if you see main don't get confused is it still okay. So so far on Linux machine we have managed to clone our remote repository using the password based authentication and which is awesome so you can see i have readme.md and one hidden file for um, automated build which is .gitlab-ci.yml i think this is what you're gonna see in the later videos of the gitlab series so we're gonna try now ssh based authentication that we have set up just a while ago so to do that, uh, I need to actually do some pre-work because since it's, an, since it's a Docker machine, a lot of packages are not installed there. So I wanted to install Veeam at least so that I could edit file and push to remote repository. So um, our installation of Veeam is completed. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to edit this file, readme.md file, and then going to push um, to remote repository. Nothing fancy, just a simple text file I'm going to add here and then run git status. So you can see readme.md file has been modified. So you're going to add it to staging. So to do that, we run git add minus u. So it's going to add the updated file to the to the staging so once that is done we're gonna add a commit message um, so we're gonna write troubleshooting gitlab authentication so now you see <laughs> i have a more problem because as i said it's a new machine nothing has been set up so i wanted to also set up um, my username and then the email i really hate to set global because it messes up everything on your working computer so i like to put dash dash local so dash dash local means my username and email is going to be applied to only this particular repository so in our case is git gitlab tutorial so if you have another repository called um, git for example so your username is not going to be um, this one so you need to set that up unless you have something globally set so for now this is really good so i'm going to set my username and then the email address for this particular repository so that i could um, uh, push to remote repository so now everything looks good so we're gonna push so to push as you can see this is really um, uh, repetitive when you have password based authentication it's gonna ask for the username and the password each time you try to do stuff so therefore um, i really don't like this approach so the reason actually did not work is because i did not have the commit message added so let's add the commit message again and uh, let's give it a message so fix the ssh authentication that's the message we put in and we're gonna see also git log that's just pretty equal one line so you can see the commit message in one line so that looks good excellent so i think we are ready to push so again it's going to ask for the username and then password how hectic is that can you imagine if you are pushing 50 times a day it's going to ask for uh, username 50 times <laughs> i think this is gonna yeah i think this is gonna drive people crazy at work to be honest so as you can see on the screen we have successfully pushed our changes to the upstream repo everything looks good and there is also automated build uh, in this case nothing is going to happen is because my runner is actually not running so it's gonna hang for forever or i need to cancel that pipeline job the ci job anyway so uh, we're gonna clone so this time we're gonna use this ssh based um, authentication so as you can see we have managed to uh, clone git gitlab tutorial repo um, to our local 
Linux machine and this seems to work and we are gonna delete it because we don't want to keep repository under repository but I just wanted to show you you could clone it and uh, this works so what we're gonna do is that we are gonna remove this one from here and we're gonna go one directory up and now you can see already exist and is not an empty directory so this is what I tried to talk ab about um, before so now to overcome this issue you could actually run git remote dash b you can see the upstream actually using https not the one uh, we are using for ssh so to fix this issue as you said earlier we need to change the url so we're gonna change the url so let's go and copy the url from here so we're gonna take the clone with ssh url and we need to run git space remote space set url and then we are going to run um, uh, origin and then the url so git remote set url origin and then the url so now this has changed to the url from https to the newly um, added one so you can see now we have git at the rate of gitlab.com so which is what should be for ssh so if you get any authentication failure or something this is what exactly you have to do you need to first check what is your upstream url if is if it is https you need to change it to um the one we just showed it to you so just for an example i'm gonna write one more line on that readme.md file and uh, run git status just to see that we have modified this file and then you can also run git diff um, where you can see what has been changed um, on a readme.md file so as you can see running git diff um, what has been actually added or updated uh, to readme.md file and now we are good so we need to run git status to see what has been actually updated and right after we can run git add minus u which means that add all those updated files to the index so that should be enough for now we're gonna write the message so fixed ssh odd issues so our message is uh, added commit message so now what we're gonna do we're gonna do the push as you can see um, my key is expiring soon is because I have um, set up the expiry key for that Linux one so therefore you see the warning so if you do not set up the expiry keys um, set up the expiry date for the keys so it's not gonna show you that message so now as you have seen we have successfully um, pushed changes uh, with SSH based authentication since everything is working so thanks for watching and uh, like share comment if you like my videos and uh, see you in the next one stay safe cheers and uh, practice a lot thank you very much